Welcome to the site of the martyrdom of St. John de Brebeuf and St. Gabriel Lallemont. They were brought here by the Indians and brutally tortured. Here's their story. One morning in March, 1649, the two priests were on their way to St. Ignace Mission, St. Ignatius, staying the night at the St. Louis Mission. An enormous band of Iroquois Indians, mostly Senecas and Mohawks, surprised the Indians at St. Ignace, St. Ignatius Mission, and swept through the village, killing the vast majority of the inhabitants. They quickly sped on to St. Louis Mission, where the inhabitants had been warned and were briefly repulsed by the few Huron braves who had not fled. It was not long before they chopped their way through the palisades, the wooden walls, overwhelmed the defenders and spread death and destruction throughout the village. They fell upon the priests with fury, beat them and bound them, forcing them to join the other prisoners they had taken. The prisoners were taken then to St. Ignatius' mission here on these grounds, from where there was smoke still rising. The priests were stripped and made to run the gauntlet. The gauntlet was two rows of Indians with clubs, metal rods, rocks, chains, and running through them, they had to be beaten and they had to pick up again and if they fell and run to the end. Then the two priests were then led into a large cabin that St. John de Brebeuf had built, a building that was meant to be the mission church one day. It was here that the priests would consummate their final sacrifice. In this building were erected six torture posts surrounded by the customary fires. The priests made to each other their final confessions and then spoke a few words of encouragement to the newly baptized Huron prisoners. St. John de Brebeuf, Brebeuf was chosen first. The Iroquois Indians were determined to break him and the tortures they inflicted upon him were far more than a man could bear by his own strength. After mangling his hands, they dragged him to a post, which he embraced as Christ had embraced his cross. They applied burning torches to his whole body. They couldn't understand why he didn't cry out, and so they applied the fire as long as they could and cut into the burned flesh with their knives. St. John de Brebeuf raised a strong voice to encourage the Indians who were Christians. My sons, my brothers, he shouted, let us lift up our eyes to heaven in our affliction. Let us remember that God is the witness of our sufferings, that very soon he will be our exceedingly great reward. Let us die in our faith. Let us hope from him the fulfillment of his promises to us. I have more pity for you than I have for myself. Bear up with courage under the few torments remaining. The sufferings will end with our lives. The grandeur will follow them, which will never have an end. His torturers could not believe his courage. The only words he spoke when his pain was great was, Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus, have pity on us. The tortured Hurons would repeat this after him. In their attempt to break this defiant bravery, the tormentors cut away his lower lip and thrust a red-hot iron down his throat. Still he made no cry for mercy. They brought into the building Father Gabriel Lalmont in order that he might see his suffering confrere and warn him of what was to come. They tied him to one of the posts and set fire to the pitch smeared bark that they had tied around him. The Iroquois Indians hung a string of six red hot hatchets, hatchet heads around his neck, three on the chest, three on the back. Whenever he leaned forward, they burned into his back. Whenever he leaned backwards, they burned and sizzled into his chest. Whichever way he moved his body, these hatchets burnt their, their way into his flesh. 
Jesus, have pity on us. Jesus, have mercy on us, were the only words that left his mouth. Desperate in their attempts to break him down, they burnt some bark they had wrapped around his waist. An apostate Huron, who had been baptized, who was among his torturers, invented a torture which was diabolical in its significance. He poured boiling water over the priest's head, telling him that he wanted to help him since only those who receive a good baptism can be happy in heaven. He mocked. When he didn't, rec when St. John the Brave did not recoil at this, they cut strips of flesh from his body and ate them in front of his eyes. The apostate Huron Indian stabbed him repeatedly with a knife, telling him, that by this too he was doing him some good, since the priest had told them that suffering on earth would make them happier in heaven. The tortures continued reaching unheard of depths of cruelty. The Indians cut off his nose, sliced off his upper lip, and cut out part of his tongue. His body began to sag, approaching death, and then the Indians gouged out his eyes. They then dragged him, just before death, to the torture platform, right here on these grounds, to perform the final rites in honor of their demonic god of the hunt and of the war, Arescui. Arescui. They cut off his feet, scalped him, and removed the heart from his body, According to their custom, and in order to gain his strength, they, custom, they consumed and drank his blood and ate his heart. Thus died St. John de Brebeuf, a pinnacle of strength among his fellow martyrs. St. Gabriel Lalamont was next. In order that he would live longer and give them longer sport, the Indians fed him a meal of cornmeal mush as night fell, the torments began. They beat him, crushed his hands, and then tied him to the torture post. A slow fire was made to burn beneath him, and they laughed when the, his, his feet danced. His only words were the same as St. John Brebeuf's, Jesus, have mercy on us. Being a much weaker, slighter man than Brebeuf, they were stupefied to see that he shared his same strength. At this point, the Indians decided to moderate the torture. They wanted him to last the whole night so that he might become the morning sacrifice to their demonic god, Arescui. St. John Brebeuf had just been offered as the evening sacrifice. Therefore, they continued to apply burning sticks and red hot hatchets, but did so more slowly. Before allowing him to rest, they gave him the mock baptism of boiling hot water that Brebeuf had received. After a short period of reprieve, the Indians returned in the early hours of the morning. They forced burning sticks into his mouth, sliced off his tongue, put out his eyes, and filled the sockets with burning coals. After chopping off the hands of St. Gabriel Lalmont, consecrated to offer mass, and forgive sins. And catarizing the stumps, they again rested. When they returned at dawn, they found him still hanging on to life. And they made of him a second ritual sacrifice to Arascoi, the demonic god. They scalped him, took out his heart, and then gave the final blow to his skull with a tomahawk. He had been tortured on and off for 15 hours, a happening likely unsurpassed in the bloody history of the Iroquois. The date was March 17th, 1649, and the brave soul of St. Gabriel Lalmont sped on its way to join that of St. John Brebeuf in the happy paradise of heaven. Their bodies were recovered and we still have their relics among us. And here marks the sign here on these very grounds of these 
holy martyrs who, who consecrated this soil with their blood. Here in 1649, the sign says, on a site chosen by Jesuit missionaries, the Hurons from St. Ignace, I, built the first, built this palisaded village. Bounded on two sides by the Sturgeon River, it offered greater protection against the invading Iroquois. However, on March 16, 1649, it was captured along with the neighboring settlement of St. Louis, where St. John de Brebeuf and St. Gabriel Lallemont were seized. They were brought here and after suffering severely, Father Brebeuf died on the afternoon of March 16, 1649, and Father Lallemont the following morning, March 17, 1649. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint John the Brebeuf, pray for us. Saint Gabriel Lallemont, pray for us. Saint Anthony Daniel, martyred only a few miles from here, pray for us. All you holy North American martyrs, pray for us. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. And may the souls and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.